What's going on, guys? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So I want to go over the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to kind of go over, like I said, the back end of our roster. I want to go over some of the players that are looking to make this roster. Uh, they're players that are failing within what we're doing right now. And, you know, maybe some that will surprise us. So definitely want to go over some of that right now. Obviously, a big walkthrough day today. And, you know, open practice is right around the corner. So... Very excited for that. Now, first, I want to go over probably one of my favorites that I was excited going to training camp, and that was uh, Kennedy Brooks, the undrafted free agent running back from Oklahoma. That um, a guy that had really good patience, good vision, remind me of Le'Veon Bell in a lot of ways, but got to that you know runs between the tackles really well, gets to that second level, and is very physical. I think he's only like 215 pounds as a power back. Haven't heard much from him. I mean, nothing. From him. I mean, really, the only two I've been really looking at that I've been hearing a lot of news from is Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, a little tiny bit of Boston Scott, maybe. Uh, but that's really it. I haven't seen much of Kennedy Brooks even doing anything. I mean, if he had some good runs, probably would have heard about it regardless. Um, and unfortunate, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would give it more time. It's very early in training camp still, but I would still give it more time. See what he does in the preseason game. See if he, you know, makes, you know, what he does against the different jerseys. So, or the scrimmages or whatnot. We'll see. Uh, but if this doesn't work out, I think this designates what we're doing at running back, what we're doing at the fourth running back spot. And on top of everything else, they could go get a free agent. We saw that Jordan Howard worked out for the Saints. We saw the past couple weeks we've been seeing some news on him. So Eagles could always bring Jordan Howard back, and he would definitely come back here regardless. Um, number two, Latavius Murray is still out there as well. That was with the Falcons last year, you know, averaging over four yards a carry, uh, over 500 yards, six touchdowns. So, I mean, that's definitely another option that they have out there if they want to go get a number four running back or they give Jason Huntley a chance, but I think they want a bruiser back. I think that's what they're looking for. And there's no other bruiser backs on this roster as of right now. Um, so definitely Kenny Brooks is going to be somebody I'm going to be looking at. Um, could make the team, might not make the team, uh, but I just have to see more uh, from the running back position and to see what we have in him. And, and if he doesn't show us anything, then I think they go out and get somebody else. Okay, so that's definitely first on my list. Um, number two is LaRaven Clark has had a really bad camp. It's not good. Um, even when we acquired him like a year, what was it, a year and a half ago, whatever the case it was, it, uh, we got him off an ACL from the Colts. And then last year he got hurt twice. This guy can't stay healthy. Um, and this would have been a really good piece because he plays left tackle, right guard, right tackle. They've had him at left tackle and right guard, and he has played horrible at both this is why you're not trading Andre Dillard. Even, you know, Milada and Dillard have the concussion right now, and Dillard's not going anywhere. I know you're not picking up his fifth-year option next year. If the Eagles want to, you know, if they think that Milada's not going to, no one's going to pick up, you know, the Eagles are not picking up his option. If Dillard wants to stay here, they want to release him, let, it, let him go, and then re-sign him back, redo his deal, you know, as a backup left tackle for this team because he can't play the right side. He can't cross train. So there's, you know, the La Raven Clark is all you got, really. And I do not trust this guy staying healthy. And I don't, I don't trust this guy hasn't had enough reps. I don't even think this training camp is really going to help him regardless. Got to keep Andre Dillard behind Jordan Malata. For La Raven Clark, you want to see more depth? You know, after this year, that's it. Dillard's gone. You have no depth behind Malata, and you're going to have to draft a left tackle or do something or make some type of move or re sign somebody at this position just to make sure you have stability there because it's. You gotta have a sw you gotta have a swing left tackle. You gotta have somebody that can protect uh, Jalen Hurts' blind side. I think that's what's really important. Next on my list is gonna be Jack Driscoll at right guard, um, and he's had a really tough time. I mean, he was doing a lot. He's been he faces Brandon Graham every. I mean, from what I've read, he's facing Brandon Graham every single day, and he's been getting beat. Every day, you know, Brandon Graham goes 200% even at a training camp practice. Doesn't matter what it is, Brandon Graham goes 100%. Um, and he's been getting beat every single day. I haven't heard much about Isaac Samal moving to right guard or anything like that. I haven't heard one bit of news of any change at right guard. I heard Cam Jurgens was kind of cross training a little bit, but I haven't seen Isaac Samal or I haven't heard of Isaac Samal even being in the right guard spot, which he could have been, but hasn't been reported yet. Don't know. Uh, but, you know, Driscoll, definitely job on the line. You know, first Isaac Samali, even Cam Jurgens as well, because they're cross-training him. And who knows? I mean, if he ends up playing really well, 
who knows what they're going to do. I mean, they could uh, move Cam Jurgens to right guard this year. If Isaac Samal is not, you know, if, if he's healthy and he's back and he's ready to go. So I hate, I think by preseason, uh, by these scrimmages, we'll see what lines they have set up. I don't know the depth chart of every line that they have for the offensive line going into training camp for, you know, second, third, fourth team, whatever the case may be with all of that. So, Driscoll is going to have a lot on his hands. I'm not saying Driscoll, I think, could be the future right tackle for us once Lane retires. If he stays, you know, he's got to stay healthy, obviously. But um, I think he's done a so- solid job at right guard. I don't think he's terrific. I don't think he's bad. I think he's very solid at that position. And even if he gets beaten out, he he could be your swing right guard, right tackle, which is a really good thing. So this guy could play both positions on the right side. So him being a backup is as much a value as his, probably him starting, to be honest, or more of a value of him being a backup. So that one's very interesting. Now, we already talked about Cam Jurgens, but he ha- he did have reps against Jordan Davis and did a really good job, really good job. A few good reps against Jordan Davis, one-on-ones. They did the 11-on-11s, whatever, that you know, and, and they were looking at the one-on-one matchups on the offensive and defensive lines, and Jurgens held his own. Um, so whatever, whatever Kelsey and Howie Roseman, you know, collaboratively working together to pick the next center for the Philadelphia Eagles, they might have found their guy between Jeff Stalin mentoring and Kel- being next to Kelsey all year long. This could be a really good year for Jurgens. It would be nice if he got some playing time this way. He's not going into 2023, never playing an NFL game or something like that. So maybe you're going to need him down the road. You never know or how this competition is going to lay out after the scrimmages and preseason and when they go to the final 53, what's going to happen and, and where they're going to start guys. So I like what I've seen from Jack Driscoll uh, from not Jack, from, from uh, Jurgens, um, the, the Jordan Davis, apparently he just stays really low. He's very tough. He's very strong. Um, like I said, he's undersized. He reminds me of Kelsey a lot, very undersized, but guys, good footwork. If you have good technique, you know, you're going to, you're going to do really well in the NFL. And I think that's what he has and that's what he's going to do. So i um, very happy for Cam Jurgens. Uh, Reed Sennett's definitely another one. And I know we've talked about him. There was another throw that I didn't report and that was I think a 20-ish yard sideline catch from we uh from Carrick Weefall um another guy that actually just came off the injury report as well because he was limited for a while so he was a full go um so I mean the Senate's actually looking that I mean he's actually having a better camp than Minshew right now Minshew I think only had like one great day which was right in the beginning I think like an okay day last training camp maybe um, but Sinnott's making some completing throws and doing his thing. Him and Covey got a good, really good connection right now. Um, so definitely something to look forward to. Hopefully we have a quarterback in here that is actually going to give our guys good looks in these preseason games. I hate when we sign guys that, you know, and I understand they're not supposed to be that good. I understand they come in and the, their arms are not great, but man, I, you know, when you bring in certain quarterbacks and they came and throw the football or came and give good looks, and when we have guys open in preseason and you can't get that pass off, really sucks um, because you're making someone else. You know, you have to make other guys look good too because they're trying to make the team, trying to make a big push to make the team. So um, Reed Sin is definitely somebody I'm going to be looking at. You know, him versus Carson Strong, I have Reed Sin way over Carson Strong strong right now seems like from hearing from camp from Carson Strong he's very overwhelmed he just looks nervous and I don't know um it's not not some great things hearing uh from from Carson Strong at um Eagles training camp so that I guess that would probably make sense and last but not least Britton Covey okay the one I'm most excited to talk about obviously he got the most reps at punt return uh, had a slant touchdown. I mean, did did really, really good. I mean, him and Senate, you know, connected on a couple passes. He was playing against the third string defense, okay? he If he's already showing flashes from the slot as a wide receiver and he's getting the most out of the punt returns, most reps out of the punt returns out of everybody. You have Gainwell, Rager, Watkins, okay? Other than Covey, it's Gainwell, Rager, and Watkins at the punt returns right now. And I, and I think they see something in him. I mean, obviously, we saw what he did at Utah with all the special teams. There's 18, there's 18 to 22 minutes of film, okay, on Britton Covey, okay, with these with these punt returns, kick returns, playing as a slot, playing as a running back, even threw the ball as a quarterback a couple of times. I mean, this guy can almost do anything. It's like your switch. It's like your switchblade. It's like your Swiss Army knife. I mean, you could throw him anywhere, wherever you want to do. He'll get the job done for you. 
Um, but I want to see him elevated to the, you know, let him face the second team defense, elevate him to the first defense, let him face the first defense, something like that. Like if he's already showing a lot of flashes right now against the third team defense, I want to see him against, uh, against better competition. Move him up for a few reps with the first offense or the second offense, whatever the case may be. Let him go against, you know, the for at least the first two defenses or something because then it'll really show us. I don't think the Eagles are really rushing to do this with him too much like just they're easing him in a little bit and i think you know once we have the scrimmages and we have the preseason games we're going to see a lot more to see if this can transcend to the nfl i would love for him to be another scotty miller on this team i think i scotty miller on this team or i don't even care what it is at this point like i feel there's something there i feel like there's there's talent there and they, the Eagles just have just got to let him release it. And more days have just got to go by in the preseason. And I think facing, I think when he faces an, another, you know, it gives you extra motivation when you're facing another team, another jersey. And I think that's what he will do. So we'll see what happens. Definitely one of my favorite undrafted guys coming in and hopefully showing off. And we need our special teams on point. And who knows? All I care about is the special teams before anything. All I care is about special teams. If he makes special teams easily and you can put him as a slot receiver, as a gadget guy or something like that for a trick player, whatever the case may be, end arounds, jet sweeps, screen passes, go routes, slants, whatever the case may be, special teams first. And then if he works out, if he, if he totally just overwhelms me with his just what he could do, work him into this offense if that's the case. So... Other than that, guys, it's pretty much it. Those are some of the players I want to go. I just want to go over real quick, and I seem like they were pretty important. Some on the offensive line, Britton Covey, and um, you know, and some at the quarterback position. So, other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Kicks what up, follow side. Peace out, guys. Peace.